Good morning. I'm uh, Dr. Paul Hemus, director of the Center for uh, Global Health and Translational Science. I've <clears throat> uh, got a, a small presentation today, about 21 slides, on uh, clinical research dynamics. The points I'm trying to get across are the chaos that comes from um, these large uh, uh, human use uh, clinical trials and uh, some of the issues you got to think through and then some of the, some of the ways that maybe uh, we can help control the chaos. So uh, the, the title, Teams of Teams and the Art of Controlled Chaos, uh, is kind of a lead-in. Uh, the beginning of the presentation is discussing the, the vast number of people involved in getting these teams started uh, and the various uh, interactions among each one of those teams. This is, a, this is, this is actually a, uh, a diagram of um, a study team uh, for a recent study we started. You may not know, but this all started with uh, Holly Shinatri and one CRC and me. Uh, and over two years grew to this uh, because this is what it takes uh, to get the study team. The yellow portion of it <clears throat> These are, are the actual center personnel um, from upstate that are involved in the teams. These other colored uh, areas are different components within upstate um, that, and outside um, that are also involved in the team. So everything from the sponsored programs, uh, a quality program, um, database development uh, through the CRE, uh, the nursing staff at the clinical research unit, uh, and then laboratories, uh, at, in the uh, Department of Microbiology and Immunology. So this already is a team of teams. This starts out as uh, multiple different individuals and groups having to interact just to get the study started. But the reality is this is just the tip of the iceberg. It was a DOD-sponsored trial. And so what the DOD saw, uh, what our pharma partners saw, was that really SUNY was just one single team. And then what they added on was their own teams. So first there was this DOD contracting team. Uh, and they had to come in and start interacting with uh, a portion of um, our team. The focal point always being the PI seems to be the single focus for all these things. Although the reality is I had very, very little to do with any of this. And then the DOD contracting, after the initial discussions, handed off to a sole source contract through the Cherokee Nation. So now we're interacting not just with this monster DOD contracting element, but an entire subcontracting element called the Cherokee Nation. And then you had a quality assessment team come in. Folks who uh, do quality for a living. They speak quality, they think quality, they act quality, they write quality. Uh, single line, initial and date when they're writing letters home to mom. They came in to look at us, and from top to bottom, from uh, our quality programs all the way through our, regula our regulatory processes, all the way down to the individual stuff that's being done in the lab. Uh, multiple interactions across multiple levels. Uh, then we started our protocol development team. Now, this was a team that uh, had our industry sponsor, a group from the DOD, and then multiple groups within uh, uh, the upstate family. Uh, so this crossed uh, multiple layers. Then... We had, took a subset of the protocol development team and developed a lab assay development team. Folks specifically focused on uh, developing the exploratory assays uh, for this enormous protocol. So we layered those guys on over a huge portion of uh, our sponsor, the DOD, uh, and our lab. And then we had to start developing the database. This was a contracted element. So uh, we tucked in a database development team that crossed our sponsor, the DOD, and multiple uh, elements within both our clinical uh, uh, trial team uh, and other uh, assets at the upstate, including the CRE. And then we have the rest of these components. The IRB is a team. Uh, if you're interacting with the DOD, they have a second uh, IRB. The clinical research unit is a, um, a, a supporting element, um, so we have to start to interacting with them and uh, do the education process for the staff and the CRU and ensure that all the assets in the CRU are capable of uh, uh, holding our trial uh, capacity-wise. We have to start interacting with the research pharmacy. So as you layer these things on, we have uh, uh, an additional uh, set of interactions. Uh, and then, sorry, and then we have, um, it became apparent that we did not have capacity. We had to have new hires. So, uh, and we had to have new equipment. 
So this layered not just uh, across uh, our partners, but whole different organizations uh, within the Upstate family. Now we're in with contracting and purchasing and shipping and um, a variety of other things uh, that crossed multiple uh, organizations. <clears throat> so now you see already we have multiple people uh, involved in multiple different circles. And we haven't even started the study yet. So this is the reality that happens before you ever get to the study. You're exhausted. Uh, you're pulled in a thousand different directions. You're not sure if you're even doing the right thing. Some of this stuff is brand new. Nobody's ever interacted with the DOD. Some of this stuff is old hat, but it's got a new twist on it because it's a new pharma partner or the new DOD. So slowly over time, what we developed was what we thought uh, what, uh, was a, a way to address uh, the chaos. And so what I want to be as the take-home message here is just that you have to understand the issues. You have to understand that there's a storm before the calm. The best part of the entire process is when finally you say, okay, let's start the study. Up until then, you just have to accept that you're going to be pulled in a thousand different directions, and there has to be a focal point uh, so that you can have some semblance of organization and some semblance of meeting uh, your suspenses. So this is how we did it. We broke it up into a plans section and an operations section. This is an old army terms. But the plans portion was designed to be about eight months long, and the operations section was designed to be about four months long. And the handoff between the, the folks who were involved in the plans and the handoff to, to the people that were involved in the operations was right around the IRB. Now, the benefit of this is not only will it work for a single study, but if you have multiple studies that are going on simultaneously, some may be in the plans, some may be in the operations uh, period, and some may have already started the study and uh, be actively enrolling or, or, or immunizing uh, volunteers. So if you have multiple studies going, these uh, can layer um, uh, and ensure that you still have um, enough capacity uh, to cover all the commitments that you've got. So... Um, when you talk about the plans portion of it, we, the PI is always, obviously going to be involved. Uh, our regulatory affairs group within the center was involved. Um, we have, we've dedicated assets to developing what we call a plans chief, someone whose job is to coordinate this entire eight-month period to ensure that all of these components are organized. And if you have enough studies going on, it's probably worth the investment. Your lab director has to be involved. Your QA program has to be involved. And, of course, there's a huge... Uh, involvement with sponsored programs and uh, all the other elements, uh, you know, in that office. When you look at uh, what goes on, you really think that the way the process was supposed to work is you go through DOD contracting. Once the whole contract is done, the criteria are all signed, that's when you start uh, the rest of this. But the reality is no. The reality is the protocol development, if you waited for contracting and uh, all the subcomponents of it, uh, you would be six or eight months uh, into the process before you even put uh, pen to paper for uh, uh, the concept of the protocol. So these two things happen simultaneously. So if everybody's consumed with contracting, you're not going to be able to do your protocol development. The other thing that's a, um, a reality is that while you wish that you would have your contracts in place and your money there and your protocol developed, uh, and everything ready to go, uh, and then you could say, who do I need? Do I need new hires? Do I need new equipment? Uh, uh, it takes a long time to hire somebody, and you're really making decisions on new hires way, way ahead of study start, as well as equipment purchase. And then the database development team, um, it takes um, eight months to a year uh, to, to get a database uh, developed. It's based, uh, they're involved in the protocol development process, the lab assay development process. They have an enormous number of, of documents that they have to prepare to support the study. And so this is something that can't be, uh, can't be waited on. It has, to be in, it has to be involved really way up here. The minute you find out that uh, there's a potential you're going to be responsible for a database, even before the contracting mechanism is in place, the database development is going to have to start. And then we have all of these things that we didn't really talk in depth about but have to happen. SOPs and SSPs have to be developed. And these are not just something done locally. These are going to be reviewed by your pharma partners in the DOD. There has to be a concerted effort to get everybody involved in the, in the uh, trial, which includes the CRU personnel uh, and the staff. You have to get them trained up on the, on the, uh, uh, on the protocol. And so the new hires have to be on, in place before uh, all this can happen. Uh, and then, of course, you have to be prepared for what is the study initiation visit when you get the final go-ahead saying it's time for study start. So 
Uh, that was a whirlwind tour of uh, the, the topic, uh, some of the dynamics of clinical research. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of us think of it as, as Bob Dylan. You know, we just have to accept the chaos, even though it may not accept us. Uh, and, but I think that really what we have to know is more like Chuck down here. Uh, we, we're living in uh, a world that, where we are going to continuously be wrong, stupid, or foolish. Uh, and we just have to uh, understand that that's our charter in life, to take wrong, stupid, and foolish uh, and turn it into a discovery that changes the world. So thank you. Uh, and if there's any questions, Holly would be happy to answer them.